This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Sai. I get Morgan, I get Yar, like we learned last week from the Chida and Chaim Falaji. The first 12 days after Sukkot correspond to the beginning of the year. So Sukkot ends in Chutzah Aretz. You have Chav Aleph is Hashanah Rabbah, Chav Beis is Shmini Atzeres, Chav Gimel is Simchas Torah. So you have Chav Dalid, Chav Hey, Chav Vav, Chav Zayin, Chav Ches, Chav Tes, Lamed, Aleph, Beis. Gimel was Friday, Shabbos was Dalid. So today we're the last day of the 12 days that correspond to the beginning of the year. So tomorrow is like a new start even. So we're still in the beginning. We're always in the beginning. We're always, you always have to say you're in the beginning. Once you're not in the beginning anymore, it gets... Okay, so since we're in the beginning, we're going to learn about the beginning. We're learning about Bereshus. And uh, I want to read to you the comments of the Ramban in his Hakdama to Sefer Shemais. The Ramban dubs Bereshus a new name. This is the Chiddush of the Ramban. I did some research. I did not find this uh, phraseology anywhere else. So this is really the Chiddush of the Ramban. The Ramban says, Hishlam HaKos of Sefer Bereshus, Shehu Sefer HaYetzira BeChiddush HaOilam VeYetziras Kol Noitzar. The Ramban says like this, The book of Bereshus, aside from being the Sefer of Vision, like we've spoken about, is also the book of creation. Yeah? Bereshus is the book of creation. Oh, here it is. The Ram, this is Ramban's Chiddush. Nobody else calls Bereshus the book of creation. But this, this is the uh, innovation of the Ramban. So the Ramban says, why is Bereshus the book of creation? Because it talks about the creation of the world and the creation of all, uh, all entities. I see Bada Bayekasha. Because 99% of Rishas is not about the creation of the world, it's about the stories of the Avais. Says Ramban, Uvimikre ha kulam. It also talks about the stories of the Avais. Now, why is that creation? Shehem ke'en yitzira lezaram. Because the stories of the Avais create the history of their descendants. Why? Then they shall call Mikrehem all of their happenings. Tziurei Devarim are images, lirmais, to allude, lohoidia, to make known, kala asa lovelehem, whatever is destined to happen to them. In other words, Ramban is bothered by Akasha. That why is Sefer Bereish is called the book of creation? It's not about creation. There's one parsha about creation, but all the stories are not creation. And for the Ramban, no, the stories are creation. Whatever happened to Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov create the destiny of the Jewish people. Got the answer? That's the answer, Ramban. Bereshit is the book of creation because whatever happened to Abraham creates the future history of the Jewish people. I'll give you a few examples in this week's parsha. Parsha is Lech Lecha. It's amazing. We're already up to Lech Lecha. How did it happen? I, you know, time flies faster even as you... Is this shot in my office? Oh, yeah. That's exactly... That's, that, this is where the Ramban um, introduces the concept of Masi Avais. Similar Banum. Ah, the Ramban says... It says, Vayava or Avram Ba'oretz Ad Mekoim Shechem. Here, Rashi. This is Gavaldik. This is something. What's the first place that Avraham goes in Eretz Yisrael? The first place that Abraham ever went in Eretz Yisrael. Where did he go? Where did he stop off? He went to Koysal Maravi. He went to uh, Ragamliel. Where, where did Avraham go when he came to Eretz Yisrael? The first stop. Shechem. Can you imagine? The first place he went is Shechem. It says Rashi, Lehispalel al b'nei Yaakov. Does that not have very profound meaning today? You know what's going on in Shechem. Every single, probably more than a week, there are major you know, military um, battles to knock out the highest, you know, most dangerous terrorists. Can you imagine? So Rashi, was Rashi, did, not, did Rashi not write his commentary, Benavua, first stop of Avraham, Ad Mekoim Shechem, 
Lehispalel abne Yaakov kisheyavo lihilochem b'shchem. Okay, so we know how pipshada means when the Bnei Yaakov came to rescue Dina. But the words of Rashi are, Lespalel al Bnei Yaakov kishayavoy lachem b'shchem. To send to your father. Yeah, send him this clip. Rib Shmuel, we're going to send you the clip. <laughs> okay. So, that, so Rashi says, um, I'm going to tell you a principle that you should understand in all the upcoming parshias of Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. V'u'inyin gadol. This is a great matter. Hiskirur Chazal, Bederach Ketzara. Chazal say it in very concise terminology. That what? What Dr. Asi said. Komasha Eira La'avois, Simen Labanim. Yeah? Whatever occurred to the forefathers is a Simen to the Banim. Therefore, says Ramban, Lachin Yarichu Aksum B'Sibra Masoz, Lachafir Saber, Shisham Mikrim. Therefore, the Torah is Marech. Here, you want to look at, look at the words. If every, does everyone have sheets? Therefore, the Torah is marich about the stories of the travels and the diggings of the pits, of the, of the wells. And the reader may think, You would think, this is extraneous matters. I'm, I'm, I'm reading books about the wars of antiquities. What do I need to know? That Yitzchak went to a place and he dug one well and they called it, they called it Asek. And they dug a second well and they called it Sitna, and they dug a third well, and they called it Rechoi Who cares? That does anything for me. Says Rabban, Kulam Bam Lalamed al Asa. They're all portending the future. They are what we call a pre enactment. Don't let anyone ever try to convince you that that's not a word. The word is pre enactment. Pre enactment means when you do something that pre enacts. Meaning, before it actually occurs, this triggers before the actual occurrence that it should occur in the future. Now the Ramban says an amazing principle. Second paragraph. Veda. Chassam Soifer said that uh, it's very, the importance of learning Ramban ala Torah. The Ramban read, this is perhaps the most famous words Ramban ever wrote. Veda ki ko gezeras irin. Every decree from on high. Kashar teitze mi koyach gezeira el poyal dimyoin for it to come from what we call a decree that's in the state of potential to reality. Tia ha gezeira miskayemes al kopanim. Then the decree will occur nevertheless. Meaning like this. When the Almighty makes a decree in Shemayim, I say, okay, He made a decree in Shemayim. X, Y, and Z should happen to Pliny. So we, what, what has just occurred? In Shemayim, they decreed a decree. But now that decree has to trickle down, 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 from the Eilam al Yonim to this world of Misa. You know how many worlds it has to travel through? You know how much? It's like a phone call. I don't know, I have terrible service on my block. I have terrible service. I'm dealing with Verizon now for two and a half months. They just sent me something called, you plug it in, I forgot what it's called. It's supposed to enhance the quality. The Lamaisa, well, why don't I hear a thing? Because from the, t- from the time the, the wave gets from the satellite and has to trickle down through the clouds and through the pollution and through... You know, if, if, I don't know, if there's any maybe talking by davening in the vicinity, it also it interferes with the waves in the sky, right? Um, you know, the Baal Shem Tov says that if, you, if in a shul, a guy's talking in the back, it creates a cloud in the shul that the tefillos of nobody could go up. He once walked into a shul, he said, <coughs> it's very stuffy in here. He said, well, why is it so stuffy? He says, because there's thick pollution from the talking. Anyway, so we never know what interferes. So it's the same thing with Xerah. When the Rebun Shem makes Xerah, for that Xerah to go down from Shemaim and actually get to this world, it's, uh, maybe, maybe you will never concretize. So when an act is done to formalize the decree Minah Shemaim, it makes it that now the decree will happen regardless. Therefore, all the Nevi'im were asked to do actions to concretize the decree of Shemaim. So, 
Yermia was told when he received the prophecy that Bavel would drown. Yermia was told, okay, take a stone and drop it into the Euphrates and say, Kacha Tishka Bavel. So Bavel will drown. But Bavel's only going to drown if he drops a stone in the Euphrates? Yeah. Yes. Because just because we bunch some decree that Bavel should, should drown, but for that decree to materialize down here, to get from upstairs to down here, you never know. You never know what things could interfere with that. But when you do an action, it concretizes it. Or Elisha was told to shoot an arrow, and this will be an arrow of salvation against Aram. Therefore, the entire Seif of Horatius, all the actions of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov were to bring about future Gezeris on the Jewish people. So Avraham goes down to Mitzrayim so that ultimately the Jews will go down to Mitzrayim. And God says, Paro, you touch Sarah and, and Vayinaga Hashem is Paro. Hashem brings Negoyim against Paro. Why? To be able to bring Makos against the Mitzrayim. Rosh Hashanah, you take an apple and you dip it in honey and you don't make a bracha, of course. Even though the song is, dip the apple in the honey, make a bracha loud and clear, it is usher to make a bracha. Why? Because you have to make the bracha on the Shiva Saminim. But that's a story for a different time. Shiva Saminim goes first. I, the bracha, those teachers in nursery school, they fooled you. They tricked you. Shama Zalman, Rabbi Chil Mechel Tekachinsky, Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zanafeld. You can't make the bracha on the apple. You have to make the bracha on the shasmin. But besides that, I don't understand. Am I supposed to have a good year or am I not supposed to have a good year? If I'm supposed to have a good year, then I'll have a good year if I don't eat an apple. If I'm not supposed to have a good year, then eating an apple will make me have a good year. Says the Chayyei Adam, Ayin Beramban Beparshas Lech Lecha, that for a decree from Shamayim to be certified and authenticated, you need to do a Maisa. So when you eat a sweet apple, if the Gezerah Mena Shamayim is, you should have a sweet year, this will seal the deal. That's the Pshat and the Simanim. The Simanim concretize the Gezerah Mena Shamayim. Therefore, the Ramban writes further in this week's parasha. Look at number three. There is a hunger. Avraham gets to Eretz and there's hunger. Let's read these words. It says Ramban, Hine Avraham Yarad Lemitzrayim Mibnei Harav Lagorsham. Avraham went down to Egypt because of the hunger to live there. Lahacha Yois Navsha Bimei Habatars to revive himself in the time of famine. Vaha Mitzrim Ashku Aisai Chinam Lakachas Ishtai. The Mitzrim oppressed him for naught. They took his wife. Hashem took revenge with great plagues. And Avram went out with cattle, silver, and gold. What? Ah. Oh. Paro said, Accompany him. This is a remez. That his descendants would go down to Egypt because of the hunger. And the Egyptians would harm us. And just like they took Sarah, this is the Einfal the Ramban. What was the decree of the Mitzrim? Kill all the males and let the females live. You ever wonder why? <laughs> because they wanted to abuse the, the Nashim, just like they took Sarah. And Hashem took revenge bin Agam Gedolim, Achiyotsiyem, Bechesavazavit Sain Ubaka, Mikna Kavan Ma'id, Rukhush Gada. They pressure them to leave. Nothing that happened to the Avos did not happen to the Banim. Says Ramban. And this Indian Pershu, Babreshus Rabba, Rab Pinchas, Bashim, Rabbisha, Amar, Amar, Kalish Brokli, Avram, Tsei Uchvoish Haderach Lafne Vanecha, go and conquer the world before your children. The Atamoid say you'll find Kamasha Kosov be Avram, Kosov be Banav. Masse Avoy Similaban. Now, now we understand why Bereshus is the book of Yitzira, because every event in Bereshus creates a future happening for the Jewish people. By the way, the Ramban in many, many places throughout the Sefer. I'll give you a quick few examples. 
the war of the four kings against the five kings is a mashal. Ma'as Lebanim to the Dalet Malchiyos. When Yitzchak went down to Gerar, the Ramban says that's a remez to Golos Bavel. Yitzchak? Yitzchak, yeah. The Ramban says the three wells that Yitzchak dug are a simon to the three Bate Mikdashim. The first base of Mikdash, there was strife, Asek. The second, there was Sinas Chinam, Sitna. The third, peace, Rechavais. The Ramban learns that the story of Yaakov and Esav is the story, the eternal struggle between Klal Yisrael and Rome until Mashiach comes. Every event in Bereshis, the Ramban interprets as an Asayavay Simon Labanim, and therefore the book of Bereshis is a book of what? Yitzira, creation. You ready? Now we're going to say a new pshat. Why the book of Bereshis is a book, the book of creation? You ready? Perhaps we could suggest that there's something else being created throughout the entirety of Sefer Bereshis. We have a mission on Perkei Avais. Asara Doirois Minoyach Vi'ad Avraham. We have ten generations from Adam to Noyach. Ten generations from Noyach to Avraham. And then it says, Asara Nesyoi Nois Nesnase Avraham. No. Asar Nesen is Nesnasa Avraham Avinu. Did you ever notice that? That when it talk, compares Nayach to Avraham, it says 10 generations from Nayach to Avraham. But when it talks about Avraham's test, it says Asar Nesen is Nesnasa Avraham Avinu. Look at the Lashain. Asar Doi Reis Menach Vyad Avraham. Look how tolerant God is. All the generations got God angrier and angrier. Why, when we talk about Noyach, it's from Noyach till Avraham. But when we talk about the Nesyonois, it's Nesnase Avraham Avinu. You got, you got the question? No. We say ten generations from Noah to Abraham. And then we say ten tests were tested. Abraham, our father. Why do we only call him father when we talk about his tests? But we don't call him father when we say from Nayak to Avraham. We say ten generations from Nayak to Avraham. But we, say, we don't say ten tests Avraham was tested. Ten tests Avraham, our forefather, was tested. Yeah? Says Reb Chaim Lajnar, You soid gadol v'ayayim v'noira. That any challenge that Avais overcome, they acquire that Mida and that Nisayin as part of their DNA to give over to their, to their descendants. Says Ramban, let's say Reb Chaim Lajan, look at these words. Kan Omar Avraham Avinu Ule'el Omar Minoach V'yad Avraham V'loy Omar Avinu The Pshad is Yirtza Bezal Pimasha Kosov and Mishle Mishalich Betumai Tzadik Someone who walks wholeheartedly, wholesomely, is righteous Ashrei Banav Acharav. Fortunate are his descendants after him. Ki kama midoy she tzadik tarch v'yagal asiga. Many midoys that the tzadik puts an effort to achieve. Levanav acharav hima keteva mutba. In the children after their second nature. Of ktsas yigia yagil azeh. With a little bit of effort. In other words, if you work on yourself not to be angry, for you it might be difficult and then for your children it will be second nature. If you work on yourself, let's say, let's say it's hard to learn. I'm very, it's, I'm, I have a hard time concentrating. If you work on yourself to focus, then your overcoming a challenge will become imbued in the DNA of your children. Kamay Shanera Lechutz, question. How, okay, so now, now we're gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna share with you two questions. Next week's parish we have the Akedah. Big deal. Armavinu gave up his, uh, was willing to give up uh, his son, Akedash Hashem. 
being Moser Nefesh HaKadosh Hashem. What's the big deal? Throughout history, many, many, many people have given up their children on Kiddush Hashem. Like she was the first one. I was in England, in a, a city called York, where there was a tower that they surrounded the community and they were going to forcibly convert the community. So the mothers killed their children and then they killed themselves. So big deal, Avram was willing to Shachti Yitzchak. Women in uh, York in the 12th century were willing to do it. So it's a, it's a big deal that Avram was willing to shecht his son. Thousands of Jews throughout, throughout the centuries did that. Another question, that's the Kasha of Rebbe and Vassarman. Another Kasha, the Beis HaLevi. Vashem Nizah, right? Vayihi acharei hadvarim ho'eleh v'ho'eloikim nisah. Es Avraham. What do you Nisa es Avraham? Nisa es Yitzchak. It's a test for Avraham. Not a test for Avraham. It's a test. But after Avraham does it, he gets to go home. He can make a Kiddush. He can make a Lachayim. He can have herring. He can have potato kogel. He can have cholent. But Yitzchak is dead. He can't have potato kogel. So who's the test for? Avraham? It's a much bigger test for Yitzchak. At least Avraham gets to stay alive. Why are we saying it's a test for Yitzchak? So Reb Chaim Velazhner says a Yisoyed. He says that the, the phenomenon that even unlearned Jews are able to be Moisir Nefesh HaKiddush Hashem, that's they got it from Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu was willing to be thrown into the fire of Ur Kazdim. So from now on it's ingrained within the Jew that if they say to the Jew, your life or your religion, we say, no problem. Shema Yisrael Hashem Aleikeinu Hashem Achad. Friday was the yard said Rabbi Vadi Yosef. He had a guy always after him from Egypt. He didn't like Rabbi Vadi. Rabbi Vadi went up against his hashkacha, which was, which was, um, it wasn't under the vad. What could we say? You know, it wasn't uh, wasn't good. And the guy many times tried to kill Rabbi Vadi until he, um, he came. When Rabbi Vadi came back there to Israel, the guy went after Rabbi Vadi from Egypt. He got into Rabbi Vadi's house. At gunpoint, Ravadi opened up his jacket. He said, Shoot! What do I have to be scared of? Shoot! And the guy got scared. <laughs> the guy got scared. Where do Jews have this capacity? Because once Avraham was willing to do it, it's mutba, it's ingrained in the DNA of a Jew. We can be Moisir Nefesh Akhidah Shashem. Why is it that throughout the generations, people, they're living in a very wonderful Gulf, and they say, I've got to get out of here, I've got to go to Eretz Yisrael. Where does that come from? Where does, where does that inspiration come from? Where does this phenomenon come from that people suddenly pick, pick up and they go to Eretz Yisrael? The answer is because once God said to Avram, Lech Lecha, so now it's ingrained in the Jew that at any time you could pick yourself up and you could go to Eretz Yisrael. How could it be somebody could have a challenge in life, a difficulty in life, and what's the reaction of a Jew? Gamzu l'toiva! Kol ma'ad oven rachmano l'tav oved. Where does that come from? How do we have the capacity to do that? Because Hashem tells Avram, go to Eretz Yisrael. So Avram goes to Eretz Yisrael, and he can't, there's nothing to eat, he has to leave immediately because there's a hunger. But Avram Avinu did not challenge HaKadosh Baruch. He was not Mahar Achim Yidoisav. So then and there, it's programmed in the heart of the Jew that whenever there's a challenge, our reaction is, Kaman Da'avid Rachmana L'Tav Avid. So I remember I heard many years ago from Rabbi Isaac Bernstein, Ah, oh, so now we understand. You know what the big deal is that, people are, uh, that Avram was willing to uh, sacrifice himself um, at the Akedah or at Or Kazdim? The big deal is that nobody ever did it before. Like Arya Leib said, nobody ever did it before. He's the first one to do it. So for him it was a big deal once he did it. So now it's, a, it's in a second nature. Now Rabbi Burns is like this. Why is it Velekim Nisa es Avraham and not Velekim Nisa es Yitzchak? It wasn't Velekim Nisa es Yitzchak. It wasn't a test for Yitzchak. Because Avram already was willing to be thrown into the fires of Ur Kazdim. So it's already programmed in Yitzchak's DNA. 
But it, nobody ever had a Shechter son before. So it's Elikim Nisa as Avraham, but not Elikim Nisa as Yitzchak. One last point. This is Mamish Oyim and Ayra. There's a Sefer, Masayad, Rabbi Yaakov David Ilan. I once heard this from Rabbi Bernstein as well. The Gemara Brachis tells us at the time that they were taking Rabbi Akiva to be killed, it was this man Krishma, and they were raking his flesh with, with iron rakes. And he was being Mekabel Omach Hashemayim. And his students said, Even now you're being Mekabel Omach Hashemayim? And Rabbi Kiva said, My whole life I was awaiting this moment of being able to be Moisar Nefesh HaKedash Hashem. And now that I have the opportunity, I'm not going to fulfill it. Chazal say, Now I'm going to tell you a Chiddush. The Chazam Soifer says, I don't think I ever said this before. We know there's a question, how do you spell Akiva? Do you spell it Ayin Kuf Yud Vez He or Ayin Kuf Yud Vez Aleph? Says Sam Soifer, his original, his name was in Lashna Kosh with a He. But when he was a dying, Yatsasa Nishmasai Be Aleph! And it was switched from He to Aleph. That's Pshat. Yatsasa Nishmasai Be Echad. He died with the Aleph. He died that his name was switched to Aleph. Now, here's the Kasha. It says that Rabbi Kiva was awaiting his whole life to see if he could be Moisar Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem. Why only Rabbi Kiva? Well, we don't find such a thing by any other Tana. They were waiting their whole life. We don't find Rabbi Tarfan was waiting his whole life. When could, when could I have the opportunity to be Moisar Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem? We don't find Rabbi Gamliel was awaiting his whole life. When could I have the opportunity to be Moisar Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem? We don't find by any other Tana that he was awaiting his whole life. When, I could, when could I be Moisar Nefesh al Hashem? Only Rabbi Akiva. Why Rabbi Kiva? Because Rabbi Kiva was Ben Gerim. And every, no other Jew needs to determine, will I have the capacity, Bishas Naisaf, ever put to the ultimate test? Can I be Moshe Nefesh HaKadosh Hashem? No. We who Avoseinu are from Klal Yisrael, so we have it programmed in our DNA. But Rabbi Akiva was Ben Gerim. He didn't know if he had it in him. He knew he's Chayv in Mitzvahs, but he didn't know if he had the spiritual uh, accomplishment, the spiritual capacity imbued and endowed in him by Avraham Avinu. So uh, Rabbi Kiva say, I waited my whole life to see if I could do this. You guys, we know you're good. We're just, we're learning Mishnah Yomis now. We're learning Mesachta Bikurim. So the Mishnah Bikurim, Parak Aleph, Mishnah Hey, is whether a ger could say Parshas Bikurim because you, could you say that you gave me the land that you swore to my forefathers. Maybe a ger can't say that you swore to my forefathers because he's not B'nai Avraham Yitzhak Yaakov. The Mishnah says that if a ger davens for the Amr, he should say, Eloi Kecha, Eloi Ke Avoy Seichem. I don't think we do that. But that's what the, the Stam Mishnah holds that way. I think we go like another Tana that Avravinu was Av Hamoin Goyim. But Rabbi, Rabbi Kiva, according to this shot of the Sefer Masayad, Rabbi Kiva didn't know whether he had the spiritual capacity to overcome the Nisayin to be Moshe Nefesh Hashem. Okay, so back to the ranch. The Ramban has a kasha. The Ramban's kasha is, why is Sefer Bresh is called the Book of Yitzira, but it doesn't talk about the creation of the world. So the Ramban answers, it talks about the creation of the history of the Jewish people. And we would humbly suggest, according to Rabbi Chaim Velazhar, no. Bereshis talks about the creation, not of the history of the Jewish people, of the personality of the Jewish people. Bereshis is the book of the Yitzira of what is a Jew, what is a Yid. Avram Ravinu goes down to Mitzrayim. He's not Mahar Achim Yidosav. So now that creates a Jew as somebody who says, Gamzul Atayv. And Avram Ravinu listens to the call of Hashem, he goes to Eretz Yisrael, so every Jew has a longing to go to Eretz Yisrael. And all the Nisiyonis that the Avais passed, that endowed within us, the spiritual DNA of what it means to be a Jew. So it's the book of Yitzira, according to Ramban, Yitzira of the history of Jewish people, and we would suggest uh, it's the book of creation of the 
personality, of the spiritual DNA of Kla Yisrael. So this is a little bit of a hakdama to Sefer Bereshis. Hashem, next week we'll try to go back to Shaina um, Halachos. Have a great day. Kaltav. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.